will now begin the fifth lecture on 2 Thessalonians. Today, we will begin with 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. The Apostle Paul wrote the book of 2 Thessalonians. He recorded this in Corinth. He recorded this around A.D. 53. The title of chapter 1 is Judgment. These are the main points. First, blessing, verses 1 through 2. Second, thanksgiving, verses 3 through 4. Third, God's just judgment, verses 5 through 10. Fourth, prayer, verses 11 through 12. Verse 1, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2, Grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the church at Thessalonica in the name of God the Father and the Son. He wrote, Grace and Peace to you. Grace is the grace of redemption that was freely given by God. This is holy grace. Next, it says, Peace to you. This peace comes as a result of grace. This is spiritual peace. Verse 3. We ought always to thank God for you, brothers, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more, and the love every one of you has for each other is increasing. Paul gave thanks every time he thought of the believers at the church at Thessalonica. What were his reasons for this? First, the believers' faith grew. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3, Paul says that the church at Thessalonica was a church produced by faith. This church grew more in faith. This was living faith. This was faith that had life. This was faith with works. Luke chapter 17 verse 6. This is faith that has life even if it is small. Faith that has life has power. The church at Thessalonica was also a church with labor prompted by love. Now their love had grown more abundant. Love requires labor. The church at Thessalonica also grew more and more in love. When we continue to love, it grows more and more abundant. On the other hand, when we do not love, love begins to die out. Therefore, we must grow more in faith and grow more and more abundant in love. Verse 4 Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. There is hope in perseverance. The church at Thessalonica had hope and persevered in the midst of persecutions and hardships. Whoever has hope 
can persevere through hardships and persecutions. When we persevere through hardships and persecutions, we can grow more and more in faith. We will also grow in power. Paul also personally boasted about the faith of believers at Thessalonica among God's churches. Paul boasted of the faith of the believers at Thessalonica. He boasted of their living faith. This church had hope in the midst of hardships, and they persevered. The church at Thessalonica set a good example for other churches. Verse 5. All this is evidence that God's judgment is right, and as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. Believers will always face hardships in the world. However, God justly judges those who cause hardships upon and persecute believers. God will judge those who persecute us. This is written in verses 6 and 7. Then why does God allow believers to receive hardships? This is so that believers would become worthy of the kingdom of God. Romans chapter 5 verses 3 and 4. It is so that believers' spirits would grow and build character. Believers will receive rewards in heaven. It says, for which you are suffering. Acts chapter 14 verse 22. There must be many sufferings in order for us to enter the kingdom of God. We must receive sufferings for the church and for God's kingdom. Colossians chapter 1 verse 24 We will be commended by God when we suffer for the church. True churches are established through the works of believers. Jesus shed his blood for the church. Pastors must give their blood, sweat, and sacrifices for the church. Believers must serve in the church. We must look upon the Lord's glory and persevere. We must work for the church even in the midst of sufferings. Verse 6. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you. God's justice will be revealed. God will surely judge those who persecute believers. This is God's justice. God allows believers to encounter hardships in order to refine them. When we believers are refined, God will judge those who cause hardships. Those who persecute the church will receive God's judgment. All nations and groups that persecute the church will receive God's judgment. Verse 7, And give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. 
This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. God will give us relief for our hardships. Believers who received hardships will receive relief. God will also give them and us the relief of eternal heaven. God also gives us spiritual relief in our hearts today. We receive God's great comfort when we keep our faith in hardships. The Lord God would be revealed from heaven with his powerful angels. Jesus will come with powerful angels. When Jesus returns, he will save the believers and judge the enemies. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 It says in blazing fire. This symbolizes the Lord's splendor and judgment. Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 through 10 Isaiah chapter 29 verse 6 Jesus will return in the midst of blazing fire. Verses 8 through 9 He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the majesty of his power. Jesus will return in the midst of blazing fire. At that time, all unbelievers who do not know God will receive God's punishment. Those who do not believe or obey the gospel will be punished. Those who do not obey the gospel will receive punishment and the presence of the Lord and the majesty of his power will leave them. This means that life from God and happiness will leave them forever. It is a blessing for us to be close to the presence of the Lord and the majesty of his power. There is true life, rest, and peace in the glory of God. However, anyone who leaves the presence of the Lord will receive judgment and punishment. Verse 10 On the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among all those who have believed. This includes you because you believed our testimony to you. When Jesus returns in the sky, believers will go up and meet him there. Jesus will come in glory. All will marvel at Jesus when he returns. How amazing will it be when the Lord returns on clouds? At that time we will be filled with the glory of Jesus. We believers will also have glory. 
we will all resurrect to life and meet Jesus in the sky. It will be amazing for us to resurrect and go up to the sky. It says you believed our testimony to you. When Paul preached the gospel, the people at Thessalonica believed. The believers at the church at Thessalonica believed in Jesus' return. We too must look forward to Jesus' return. We must persevere through hardships. We must be well prepared to meet the Lord. We must be prepared to meet Jesus in His glory. When we suffer for Jesus, we will receive glory and crowns. Galatians chapter 6 verse 17 there must be marks to show that we suffered for Jesus. Then that will become our glory. Verse 11. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may count you worthy of his calling and that by his power, he may fulfill every good purpose of yours and every act prompted by your faith. Paul always prayed for the church at Thessalonica. What were the contents of his prayer? First, Paul prayed that God would count them worthy of his calling. Second, he prayed that they would fulfill every good purpose by God's power. Third, Paul prayed that they would act in faith through God's power. Our God called us believers. He chose us from this world and called us. God has a purpose for calling us. We must glorify God. We must live to become more and more like Jesus. We must prepare for God's kingdom as his heirs. We believers were also called to do good works. Therefore, we must fulfill every good purpose. Romans chapter 12 verse 21. Next, we must act in faith. True faith is to obey God's word. Then God's works will take place place in his power. This is living faith. This is powerful faith. Luke chapter 17 verses 5 and 6. Verse 12. We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul prayed. Paul prayed for the believers at Thessalonica. He prayed that the name of the Lord Jesus would be glorified through them. We must work for the glory of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 We must not cover the glory of God even if we face physical disadvantages. We must glorify God in whatever we do. 
John chapter 13, verse 32. When we glorify God, God will compliment us. Jesus will come in His glory. Believers will face troubles and hardships. Still, we must obey God's word in the midst of hardships and persevere. We must wait for the Lord's return. Jesus will return again in His glory. We must joyfully receive the Lord when He comes in His glory. We will continue with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The title of chapter 2 is Opposers. We will look at the main points. First, do not be shaken, verses 1 through 2. Second, opposers arise, verses 3 through 8. Third, those who do not love the truth will be deceived, verses 9 through 12. Fourth, become those who love the truth, verses 13 through 15. Fifth, grace and blessing, verses 16 through 17. Read verse 1. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to Him, we ask you, brothers, the Lord Jesus will come on clouds. At that time, believers will rise to the sky on clouds and receive the Lord. The Lord will return for sure. Therefore, we must stand firm on the truth of Jesus' return. Whoever does not stand in faith will be deceived. We must make sure that we are not deceived by lies. Verse 2. Not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy, report, or letter supposed to have come from us, saying that the day of the Lord has already come. At that time, there were people who claimed that Jesus already returned. They deceived believers. Those who deceived did so with the spirit of evil. They also deceived others with words. They deceived others with letters. They twisted the Bible and deceived others. They also deceived others with a supposed spirit of mysticism. They also claimed that they received revelations and words. Matthew chapter 24 verse 26 In this way, there are works of the devil. Even today, there are many who claim that they are Jesus. There are many cults. One person said that he was Jesus. The cult group Jehovah's Witnesses claimed that Jesus returned in the year 1918. This was absolutely wrong. When Jesus returns, he will come publicly for all people in the world to see with their physical eyes. Jesus will not come in secret. 
Matthew chapter twenty four verse twenty seven, First Thessalonians chapter four verse sixteen, Acts chapter one verse eleven. When Jesus returns, he will come publicly for people to see with their eyes. Therefore, all who claim today that Jesus returned in secret are liars. Anyone who says that he is the resurrected Lord is a liar. Some claim that they are the Helper Holy Spirit, and they are liars. Some claim that people will be saved through them, and they are all liars. Therefore, we must make sure and be careful. That we are not deceived by people. Verse three, don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. False prophets deceive people. Cults deceive people. However, it says that there will be rebellion. This means that there will be people who oppose the church. Matthew chapter twenty-four verses three and four. When believers are deceived by people. They will fall. Anyone who is deceived by the devil will fail in his faith. It says that rebellion will occur. This means that there will be many opposers before Jesus returns. Many will leave the truth. There will be many opposers. There will be new theologies. There will be mystics. People will not believe the revelation of the Bible. Some people will claim that they received revelations. Some will claim that they can prophesy. They are all fake and are liars. They speak things that come from their hearts. It comes from their subjective emotions. Ezekiel chapter three, thirteen, verses two and seventeen. Therefore, anything that does not agree with the Bible are all lies. Anyone who teaches the Bible falsely is a liar. It says the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. The man of lawlessness. Refers to false prophets and false Christs. Matthew chapter twenty-four verse twenty-four, Revelation chapter thirteen verses one through fifteen, Daniel chapter eight verses twenty-three through twenty-five. False prophets do not believe the entire Bible. They falsely teach the Bible. What are false Christs? They are people who are not Christ, but claim that they are Christ. In this way, there are many heresies. There are many cults in Korea. There are at least a hundred. There are many cults in China as well. 
There are over eighty cults in China. There are also many cults in America. These are all signs of the last days. Christianity is real. We are real, and hence, fake people attempt to earn money with our name. There are many fake products of brand name products. However, insignificant products do not have fake products because Christianity is real. There are many fakes. We must learn to discern. We must not be deceived. Verse four: He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Here, there is one who opposes the truth. He opposes God. He exalted himself. He sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. These false people put themselves in God's place. They tell people to worship him like he is God. This is idolatry. We must only serve our God. Daniel chapter eleven verse thirty six. They claim that they have authority like God. They damage the church with unrelenting violence and unlawfulness. They sit in God's temple. False prophets and false Christs come from Christianity. They use the name of Christianity. However, they are all fake. They show themselves and say that they are God. They claim that they are God. They say. That salvation comes from them. There are many people in the world who deny Jesus Christ. They claim that they are savior. We must be careful so that we are not deceived by such people. We must follow Jesus only. We must follow the Bible. Verse five. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things. Paul told the believers in advance that there would be false prophets and false Christs. Then there really were false prophets. We too must teach the believers with faith. We must tell the believers that there will be false Christs and cults in the last days. Verse six. And now you know what is holding him back. So that he may be revealed at the proper time. There will be many deceivers in the last days. When we stand in the truth, they will not be able to deceive us. Those who love the truth, and believe and obey the Bible. Will not be deceived. This is because God will keep 
the colts away from us. God will shield us from the wicked. It says so that He may be revealed at the proper time. These colts will appear when God's time comes. They will come and deceive believers. Even the most powerful deceivers will not be able to deceive believers before God's time comes. Cults absolutely cannot deceive us if God does not allow them to. God also protects us. God's solid foundation is the correct truth. We must stand firm on the solid foundation. We must not be shaken in our faith. Verses 7 through 8 For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. It says that the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. This is the same thing as the man of lawlessness in verse 3. This refers to false prophets and false Christs. It says that there is one who holds it back. Correct theologians will keep away false prophets and false Christs. There are believers who protect the correct truth and theology. The correct church and correct believers keep out cults. It says the lawless one will be revealed. Thus, there will be many cults. They will then persecute the church. Revelation chapter 13 verses 1 through 18. Yet, Jesus will return and judge the wicked men. Jesus will overthrow them with the breath of his mouth. This means that Jesus will judge them with his word. Revelation chapter 19 verse 15. Revelation chapter 19 verse 21. In this way, there will be many cults in the last days. They will attempt to deceive believers. However, God will block the cults. Then Jesus will judge the unlawful men. Therefore, we must stand firm on the truth of the Bible and not be shaken. We must be careful so that we are not deceived by cults. Here we will conclude the fifth lecture on Second Thessalonians. Thank you.